McNeese is 8-12 on the year, but they're 5-1 in the Southland. They just swept SFA in Nacogdoches, and they are ready to end a long losing streak in Thibodeau against the Colonels. He's got a 2-2 count against Alex Ernestine. Pitch is on the way, and it's grounded on two ops to Valdez. He's back on the edge of the outfield, throwing to first for out number one. And Ethan Valdez continues to hold down the Colonel infield. One down, top of the first, the 0-2 pitch. It's popped up into short right field. You've got Niehaus and Valdez in position. It's Ethan Valdez at second base who makes the grab. And that's two outs, courtesy of Ethan Valdez at second base. And now Strachner has to lead off the second. Alex Ernestine's pitch to him. Fly ball to right center field. Simon trying to charge, and he closes in time for the out. Good read from Simon in right. One down in the second. No score on the top of the second. One down and an 0-1 count to the right-handed hitting Dustin Duhon. Pitch to him. Slow roller towards third. Bell can't cut it off. Morales does, and a fire to first for the out. Joey Morales, one of the top shortstops in all of Division I baseball. His 187th consecutive start for the Colonels, two down in the second. The 3-1 pitch, Maxwell grinds it to third. It's scooped and thrown from Bell for out number one. Zane Washington scored the go-ahead run in the bottom of the second inning. And with Reed Bork and Shane Selman hoping to come home, big pitch for Alex Ernestine. Strachner opens up his stance. Bork will take off, and there's a hard grounder to short. Backhanded on the edge of the grass by Morales. He'll throw home, and Knopf makes the tag to exempt Bork from the play. The inning closes on a 6-2 putout between Joey Morales and Kyle Knopf. And Reed Bork a little too confident in his wheels. Dustin Duhon keeps the bat right on top of his right shoulder. Now a light lift. As the 2-2 is skied, it's into short left field. You've got Washington and Niehaus in the picture, and it's Niehaus, the center fielder, making the catch in left center. One down, and that is four straight innings. Alex Ernestine is taking care of the leadoff man. 1-1 one, one count, two away, top of the fourth. Cowboys already with four hits, but they can't bring home a run. Now a ground ball to third. It's extended for Bell. Behind the bag on a low throw, and he gets the out. And Brady Bell dominating defensively tonight and preventing any runs for the Cowboys. A 2-2 from Alex Ernestine. Hard grounder to second. Valdez slides to his knees. Gloves throws to first and gets the out. What can't he do? Ethan Valdez, dynamite on defense. And the Colonels have been perfect since their error in the first inning. 2-2 count. 1-0 Colonel lead with a runner on first. The pitch from Ernestine. Line to short. Morales bobbles, collects. Now you get the throw to second. Game over. Colonels win it. That's 10 straight victories against McNeese and a complete game shutout for Alex Ernestine. Hey, drama is overrated. Let's just end it. And the double play is upheld. And the eight minutes of discussion and deliberation worth it. Set the fireworks off. The Colonels have their third Southland Conference win. Nine innings, four hits, no runs for Alex Ernestine. It's his first complete game shutout of his Colonel career. Something certainly to celebrate for Seth Thibodeau. Ten straight wins at home over McNeese. You certainly had to earn this one. Sure, we, we absolutely did. But our guys had a great week of practice, and I, I feel like they deserve to win that game. And, uh, you know, some things finally went our way a little bit there at the end. So, But you can't say enough about Alex Ernestine because he was matching their guy, and their guy was just as good mm -hmm. as Alex. And, and we were able to scratch a run early. Um, and, you know, he mowed 12 guys down in a yeah. row. And uh, maybe even more than that, I'd have to check. But he pitched well. Our guy pitched well, too. We made some great plays behind him. I felt like our, our three infielders, a third, short, and second, were, were on their toes. But a, a big part of that was Alex was ahead in the count early. And uh, he had those guys swinging and, and had them off balance, and he did a tremendous job tonight. The journey of Alex Ernestine as a, a bullpen support system sure. from his sophomore season to a midweek option his junior year to becoming your Sunday starter in his right. junior season. Now it's Friday night against one of the hottest teams in the conference, and yeah. he's giving you a complete game shutout. H how has this journey played out over the last three years for Alex? Well, first of all, he, two things. He's extremely loyal and hardworking and probably the most unselfish human being I've ever coached. So, uh, and you know, he's been really good for us for about four weeks now. He actually, you know, if you look back a month ago, he had a, a no hitter going against yep. Ohio State in the fifth inning. So uh, he's just a warrior. He's a bulldog and we trust him on Fridays and, and certainly he showed you why tonight. And, and I think he was just extremely determined to be the leader and the warrior that we needed on the mound. And, and you know, our guys played great defense behind him and, uh, you know, they fought hard and, 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 and he was the reason why. 
just looking at how this game played out in the, the latter stages of the game, your defense, after one hiccup in the opening inning, it, it put Alex in a position to, to pitch differently and sure. to pitch strategically. So yeah. here you are on the ninth inning, first time they get the leadoff hitter aboard all nine. Yeah. Complicated play to end the sure. game, but it ends up being a game-winning double play. The, the resilience to stay centered in that situation, sure. where does it come from for a defense that has had some issues this year? I think that it comes from a, a leader at shortstop. You know, our team captain is you want the ball in his hands, and uh, you know, but you trust Alex. And I, I thought that he had a lot of confidence with the guys behind him by the way he was pitching, and, and they really fed off of him. And Coach Butler did a tremendous job of calling pitches, you know, and so I think it, it's a full team deal, and, and, and all of them, everyone was on it all night long, and uh, certainly it, 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 it falls on the hands of the starter and everything revolves around the starter on a Friday night and he certainly did it. This sport more than any other sport Friday night you're celebrating a win you're in the moment but you immediately sure. turn your attention to what awaits Saturday and Sunday sure. game one in the books what is it about game two that you want your team to focus on to try and make up for a couple tough Saturday losses I the last think, two weeks? You know a, a mature uh, start tomorrow and, and being ready to go uh, I think but I think our guys are, are hungry for that there's been a lot of hard work put into it and and we've talked a hard, you know a whole lot about it and uh, you know it, it, just being ready to go uh, and I think we will with tremendous leadership you know our senior class has really stepped up and and gotten hungry for it and, and they know how they good we are we just we've had some things not go our way and, and look Saturday's a swing game yeah. you know and a lot can yeah. happen on Saturday and we've got to have a little killer instinct and be ready to go because uh, we're facing a great club well let's hear from your Friday night starter sure. Alex Ernestine coach great win ten in a row at home against McNeese thank you. Thank you keep it rolling much. Let's get Ernie over here. He's 6'5", 220 pounds, and it's so fitting that he's going to show up wearing this backpack. You had the team on your back tonight. Go <laughs> ahead and enjoy a couple extra pounds on there. You can hold this. Oh, yeah. All right, so y your life and, and how it's gone from being a guy who was just part of this team to now the face of this rotation, how has it played out? Uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty exciting. It's awesome, the journey that I've had as a freshman to now, and uh, just how much confidence and trust the team has in me and how I have it in them. It's just uh, awesome, and they know that I'm going to give it my all every Friday start, and I know that they're behind my back. Whether we score one run or, or 15, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to give it my all. I thought that was a really interesting comment by your coach talking about loyalty with you because we would think, okay, well, anybody who's on the roster, they're, they're loyal. But it, it's been a journey, and to get here with so many guys that now look to you as a leader, you're a senior voice in this team. Uh, when you look at how your role has expanded, how has loyalty and belief in this program played a part in your story <clears throat> well uh, uh, like coach said my freshman year we won 34 games yeah. so I was part of one of the most winningest teams in uh, Nichols uh, baseball history and then the past couple of years didn't go our way and I could have been like man this is just not this is just going downhill like I could go somewhere else but no I stuck it out because <laughs> I have faith in the coaches and the players that they bring in and now me Noth and Joey are seniors and we're the only ones that experienced that 34 win season and they look up to us they listen to our voice they uh they trust us, and so what that our record's not the best yeah. right now, but they see us fighting and competing, and they're just going to hop on our back and do what we do, and then we're just setting a great example for the freshmen because that's what our goal is. Well, and what a message this is to future generations of, of Colonel baseball players. I mean, you grew up as far away from, from Thibodeau as humanly possible. You're, you're Mr. South Florida. You, you carry that, that kind of South Florida look with you, but what I love is that you, you don't leave here. I mean, you are as, as Thibodeau as, as they can come by in terms of here's where I practice, here's where I prep, here's where I live, here's what I'm committed to. That mindset, how has it affected your ability to get better as a pitcher? You don't leave this town. Everything you do is based on this school. Yeah, I mean, I love Nichols and just the facilities and the coaches that they have. It's just, it's like a second home. I've been here for four years. I'm only home in South Florida two months out of the year. Yes. and. So I got, uh, had to get accustomed to it and it was hard at first, but now it's just like, it's natural. I know everything about it and all the shortcuts and everything. <laughs> and just, uh, I love Thibodeau, it's a great place. And I, I, I just wanna make this season last forever because I don't wanna leave this place. Well, there were a lot of shortcuts on the mound tonight too. You get the leadoff hitter retired in, in eight straight innings. Okay, so then, then we're in the ninth inning. You, you, you hit their second baseman, who's a first team all conference Should've option. Should have been nine, but okay, Provisano's on. Ninth inning, one run game. A lot of pitchers fold in that moment. What did you tell your pitching coach, Zach Butler, and your head coach, Seth Thibodeau, going into the inning, and, and what did you think your leash was going to be like in the ninth? <laughs> uh, coach Butler looked at me, asked how I was doing. I was like, I feel great. This is my game. I'm finishing it. I had all the confidence in the world with the guys behind me. They had all the confidence in me. All my pitches were on. Uh, I just had to dig deep inside me, talk to, talk to myself saying, 
we're, I'm not losing this game. This game's on me. So whether we win or lose, it's me because I'm on the mound. So I hit the first guy. It wasn't what I wanted, but yeah. I just dig, dug in deep, got the next guy, and then a double play, and that's all she wrote. Alex Ernestine goes nine innings, gives up four hits, no runs, couple strikeouts, but it was the way you attacked these Cowboy hitters all night. They, they we're looking at Shane Selman, hitter of the year in the conference. I mean, he is, his power is ridiculous. Late swings, opposite field, everything in the sky not lifted. Uh, th this is kind of a monumental accomplishment for you, to go nine innings against a team like McNeese that, that swept you guys last year, to have a personal goal met in reach while winning a big team game, to go the distance for the first time in your Colonel career, now that you can kind of sit back and, and admire it, uh, but what's going through your mind when you think about a night like tonight? <sighs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm speechless. I mean, uh, what's kind of funny is two years ago, we played McNeese. Yeah. We had a doubleheader. I pitched the last, uh, the second game of the doubleheader. We ended at 2 a.m. I went eight and two thirds. I could not finish the game. And my coach had brought that up this week and was like, look, you almost had a CG. And in my mind, I was like, I, this has got to be it. I, I'm not going to pitch McNeese again unless it's in the conference tournament. Might as well do it at home on Friday night and start the week off and look at it. I threw a CG. It's just it's awesome. It's like uh, it's just like getting back at my old self, my sophomore year self. Oh, you couldn't finish it. <laughs> senior year, Ernie, he finished it. So it was just an awesome experience. Hey, and way to bring us in inside the locker room and, and kind of the conversation you guys are having because it's important to understand that this wasn't a fluke. This wasn't by accident. You have been thinking about finishing and getting that complete game your whole career, and you just did it against one of the best teams in the conference. Yeah, it's awesome, and uh, I wouldn't want to do it anywhere else but home, and the record we have against them at home is good, and I, I got trust in Kay and Hatcher tomorrow. Have yeah. a great start. I told my team, look, y'all been winning for me on Fridays the past three games. I mean, the past three weeks. I want to get a Saturday, Sunday win when I don't pitch. I want to win the days I don't pitch. I want you to have the pitchers back when I don't pitch. Yes. It's awesome that they have my back, but I want to see the other pitchers succeed because they've been doing great the past three weeks. It just hasn't been going our way. I would call this a war daddy moment. I think we got to put the hat on, don't you? <laughs> yes. Alex, I'll hold it for you. We'll double up the microphone for this moment. Alex Ernestine, looking good. Complete <laughs> game shutout out and a huge Friday night win. We'll do it again tomorrow. You can finish with this thing in your hand because he's the finisher. That's what he does. He closes games, and the Colonels get a third straight Friday night win. We'll see Caden look for that second victory on Saturday. Yep, win the series. That's our goal. He's Alex Ernestine. My name is Bryant Johnson. We'll see you again tomorrow night. We'll do it again on YouTube, 6 p.m., also available on ESPN Radio New Orleans. We are your home for Colonel Baseball. Alex Ernestine, complete game shutout. Three straight starts where he has pitched into at least the eighth inning. Colonels are rolling, and they will look to win the series against McNeese tomorrow night.